Yeah. But when, how can I say this? When segregation um, was here, when we had segregation, when it started to integrate, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the, back then you had doctors when it was during segregation time, you had doctors, lawyers, teachers, sanitation role models of your own because- With each other. They're and it stays in the community longer. They so the thought is some people, you know, we making other people rich, but mm -hmm. it's talented. You know, we've been working, you know, people's right. okay. So yeah. the money- Stuart, money. What's your thoughts, brother? Well, first of all, and uh, police brutality, I have to say that I am so uh, they're putting their lives at risk during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. But they see a need, the momentum of the movement, uh, the numbers that people all over the world are seeing in the street, mm -hmm. that we're going to get some meaningful change out of this. Now, you can legislate uh, mm. <laughs> uh, police activities and the things that they, you know, the, how they interact with the public. Um, a majority of is being held accountable mm -hmm. when they behave in a way exactly. where people of color that they're they not afraid of that they, because that they're they not being held accountable in a way they wouldn't behave with uh, a white person. Right. So we're going to be. Hopefully, we'll be able to change from on um, where they're being held accountable when they use I illegal chokeholds, when they're sleeping in his car, in the in the drive-through of a Wendy's, and this whole thing escalated where this brother ends up getting shot in the back, killed. Why was it necessary to arrest the brother? Yeah, you know. He said, "I live down the street. I mean, My sister lived down the street." Yeah. Uh, yeah. George Floyd, police were called uh, for, you know, a suspected counterfeit $20 bill. $20 bill, um, yeah. You know, why do police feel that they need to arrest, to restrain, and to punish people for such minor inf infractions? I know it, that according to the letter of the law, some of these things... Uh, you know, um, they are supposed to police. But, you know, I've seen videos where white people yell, spit, it, do all kinds of things to the cops and they don't get shot. Have a gun in their hand and they be say, put the gun down, put the gun down, I'll shoot, a, put the <laughs> gun down. You know, it's different tactics. So some of, some of these things and through uh, bewildered by the recorded history that is sh show that we as a people have dominated them and mistreated them and told the of and harvesting. Is that we were all isolated and they had no choice but to, to, watch. This, to watch this. It was the pandemic within the pandemic. And the right. two week protests, business as usual, back to the same. And people are out of school and out yeah. of work. Yeah, and you and you have so they, they to be a rock. Protesting. You gotta be somewhere hidden in a cave not to understand what's going on before. And he's gotten away with it. You talk about accountability. He's done this before. Well, he wait had his a hands minute. in his he pocket. He knew he was being filmed. But you know what? So his buddy showed up. That guy was dead a long time and he knew it. Well, even it. when the um the medical service came. He still, they came and checked the pulse. He still had, even when they were, they were left, he still has the knee on. They went and got the, the, gurn, the, the, the gurney out or whatever. And um, he still had the knee on the neck, even yeah. all this time. They didn't even say, get your knee off the neck. That's why they're they all coping. I mean, like, how are you checking somebody's pulse and the guy is stopping the ear? You know, you, you're hurting them right now while he's checking. That's why I knew. Exactly. That's why I thought. He, that's why I thought they knew he was. He was gone. They knew that then. We told knew. the people. Awesome. You know, he's already gone. Well, we saw him go right in yeah, front of us. Right in front of um, us, and that was unbelievable. But I didn't understand what threw me is if you look at the film, the work the the ETMS workers had on bulletproof vests and had guns on. I never saw that. They said that was actually police. That's what I'm. That's what oh, I'm hearing. Okay, I mean they had guns and they had a bulletproof vest. Because what, what EMT comes over and you don't see...
Right, because problem. they didn't want pe- other people, the, right. the people on the street, the bystanders, right. to like go off. They were already saying, "You're killing them. You're killing." He just kept it there, kept it there until they actually came and lifted from un- lift um, George Floyd from That's under right. the man's and knee. dragged the man, and he wasn't moving. You know, um, it's, it's incredible. Now I'm, I'm gonna flip it back. Now, now you got Marvin Gaye says, uh, "What's going on?" Right? The lyrics to that song and what's going on today is, I mean, it's still it's so still the same thing. Yeah. It's still the same thing. Still the same stuff going on, and I just don't know. I have a seventeen-year-old son, right? And we all in the same boat. Yeah. It's seventeen. You know, it, it's, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. I, you know, I fear for my, I fear for myself, but I'm not afraid. You know, you understand right. what I'm saying? When I get stopped, I know not to lip off. I know not to do any of that but stuff. But not right? everybody, you know. But you know. You just don't know. You can do all the right things and still be it's in the same still. situation. I was going to say, it's, sometimes it doesn't matter. Well, people come out and have their hands up. That's right. I mean, what, you can't do anything. Even the um, Castile guy. Castile guy? Philando yeah, yeah, the guy. Yeah. Yeah, Philando. He's like telling him, okay, he don't want to go in his glove compartment. He's letting him know, I'm a, I carry, I have a license to carry. So as he said that, the, he got shot, killed. Yeah. Right with yeah, the little this. girl in the back. With the girl, I mean, like, hello. It's 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 crazy. You know, you can't even say you can't come up. You no, we seen them run with run away, and that other cop shot um, the guy in the back, and then pl- tried to plant the um, yeah 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 taser on. And he had a black partner that did not dime him out. That black feet along with that. Yeah. Now, what? So what is it's, that? A, it's, it's the culture there. You know, it's the culture, but. Mm. Yeah. You know, you're not driving. Call somebody up because they could just give him a some. You know, make him come to court. They had him out there at 40 from that day. They had their birthday party, and it was continuing to the next day to the skate party. So he's mm-hmm. having this conversation with the cop telling him these things. And how do you go from that to arresting this man? He was mm-hmm. sleeping in his car. He wasn't a threat. You know, he was unarmed. You know, even when he took the, um, well, he took the taser from him because he didn't want to get tased. But when he's running away, I felt threatened. They don't, r- black people feel threatened. They yeah. don't like talks about how black people feel. You know, don't care. Like, I'm don't just care. going to touch on what Stu said. You yeah. know, what have we families broken apart? We've done nothing just boggles the mind as, as to why you feel this way about black people. I really believe, honestly, I believe that it goes way, way back. And I think that they just simply Simply put, they think they're superior to us and that well, we are their servants. Well, we were enslaved really as a that. people. We were yeah, enslaved. Yeah. How do you respect people that you enslaved? Yeah, you know? I just think that's what it is. And and the whole mentality is is nothing new. This is what they've yeah. always... And then they used the Bible while they were doing these things to us in those days. They would say, yeah. read scriptures and, and, Today, and, and castrate you in front of your family. And, and, yeah. and then, you know, oh, the Lord, this, that, the third. You know, you yeah. know it, it's a mentality. You know, I don't think it's going to ever stop. Very good, there's very good people. There's very yeah. good white people, everybody. You know, there's bad... But as a whole, we just want to exist. You know, I saw a, um, a meme that said, you know, white America should be glad all we want is equality and not revenge. <laughs> well, you know, all we want is equality. All we want is equality. You know, treat us right. Treat you know, we you know, it's a human right. And you know, in the, the saying in, injustice to one is injustice to all, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so true. You know, yeah. The irony the irony is that the people that behave that way and feel superior are acting in such an inferior way. Yes. You know, um, but they don't have the self-awareness to uh, realize that their behavior is inferior. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they're, and they're not superior. Mm. And I don't want to get on cops because, you know, I'll call a cop in a heartbeat. Yeah, I mean, you know. I'm calling the cops. That's I'm what they're the there for. I need you to know? call a cop. Yeah. I'm going to call a cop if I feel so. I'm, you know, there's good cops, but you have to get rid of the bad cops. You know, yeah. D.L. Hoogley said, Cops and priests are the only people who can get away with doing things and they go to another precinct or another parish. That's right. You know, they're not thrown out. You know, they go right. to another precinct or they go to another parish. The only professions, you know, right. that you can um, really do bad and continue on in the same field you're in. Um, but there's great cops. And of course, I have yeah, absolutely. members and that I mean, are cops. I have family members, you know. Me too, yeah. We all, have, we all know some great yeah, cops. Yeah, but yeah, So they my make it bad for the good ones. Pull, fire his gun 20 years. He never even shot his gun. Mm-hmm. Some of that circling the wagons when uh, they witness each other uh, 
doing bad things, you know, behaving poorly, it might be the dirt that they have on each other. Could be that too. Yeah. 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 You did it this time, I did it last me. time. You can't tell on me. Yeah. And, and, and tell on me, I got this on And it's bad in all professions. You know, yeah. people, people are in every walk of life. So, you know. Yeah, what could you do? You just, the, the problem is that you're there to protect and serve. That you're there to protect and serve. You're not there to, to keep just arrested. You know, I saw it all the last week where, you know, they, they arrested two 13 year olds for jaywalking, handcuffed. Yeah, them. I heard about that. That's. I'm like, really? And now the 13 year old has two felonies because they said he resisted arrest. They were just walking to their aunt's house. It wasn't even like a street where all this traffic is, it's like road, right? And they said they were terrified because they were like the cop car was following them. And one got out and ran up behind them and just grabbed them from behind. So of course you're gonna fight. Somebody just grabbed you from behind behind. But they were terrified. They said they were already terrified. See, this is so what scares hard. me. Now, this is what scares me. Something like that happens after what we're going through. Now you get somebody killed in Atlanta. You 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 get these guys, the two kids snatched up. These cops haven't learned anything. They have not learned a thing. They're still I saw I saw a clip last week on June 6th, they grabbed a guy in the street. It was a woman and a guy in a car. They grabbed the guy out the car, tackled this dude in the street. It was two of them. And they beat on him like he was- The college like he, students? No, no, this was the college students. This was in huh. the street. And I think it was in a, it was in Houston, if I'm not mistaken, huh. or somewhere down south. And this cop was swinging on this, he jumped on top of him, put his weight on the guys on the ground, two of them are on him. And they're swinging on this guy like, 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 like it was a prize fight and they're throwing haymakers at this guy and the woman is screaming, stop, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Then they grab her and arrest her as well. So this was right after George Floyd. This is still going on. Yeah. It doesn't make a difference because like you said, Stuart, well, you know, accountability. Right. And one of the things we have to, one of the things we have to consider is the FBI uh, a number of years ago uh, did the investigations and did a study and found uh, alarming amount of white supremacists and racist group activity in law enforcement. So I have to believe that some of this brutality and some of these murders have to be purposeful. Exactly. As opposed to agree. Uh, <laughs> the police just being fearful. And I'm sure there's there there are some. police that make mistakes. They're afraid. They've been trained to be um, more like a military than peacekeepers yeah. right. so right. their first reaction uh, according to their training may be to go for their and death. their lives are on the but, line because they could pull somebody over and right. get right. shot right. Right. But, but I have to believe that some of this is intentional I believe that too when you're looking at it somebody recording you and you're not budging with your hands in your pocket and got your knee on, that's and you know they're recording that's and you Super Bowl, keep doing man. it that's but, a lot of cojones right, right there boy. for real right. you know right. And you anyway, said it doesn't um, seem like they're learning because they they don't seem to be now down the back. Now I understand that we're all human, and that if you haven't achieved a certain level of spiritual uh, cultivation, that you're going to react with your emotions first. Yeah. So we have all these protesters in the street. You have all these people pointing the finger at the police. Uh, they're taking offense to yeah. some to some right. of them. Some of them are like, yes, are. you know. Why are you pointing your finger at me? Mm -hmm. We're not all bad. We're protecting you. You know, we're, you know, when, when. But, well, some people don't feel like being protected. Right. When, when the, you know, the stick up kid is, is just robbed you or, you know, your husband is beating you up, you call the cops. So you want us for protection. Right. But now you're blaming us for all these things going, going on. So, uh, some of them are taking offense to this and some of them letting their emotions, uh, you know, get out of hand when they're dealing with some of the protesters and maybe just, you know, in a, in a traffic stop now. You know, yeah, even if I agree. In, in an area where there's protesting, mm -hmm. they pull a guy over and they already got an attitude right. because right. of the environment right now. Uh, yeah. But uh, so I hope that they take a step back and take a breath and realize uh, that you know, they have to start treating everybody like people. Yeah. My only fear is that I never thought that after 
Sandy Hook and babies got killed in their classrooms that we wouldn't have meaningful gun, uh, gun reform. Yeah. They didn't care about babies. But they didn't care about babies being killed. No, yeah. no, no bill you came know, out, nothing. Nothing yeah. came out of that. You know, the, 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 the high school students right. that got killed. You know, we had big protests and marches after that. Um, they haven't made Nothing any changed. changes yeah. since then. Nothing changed. You know, because big business. Yeah. You know, and, and, and talking about those shootings, you know, those those people get to walk out with bulletproof vests on and you know, a guy killed nine people in a church and he walks out. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, yeah. We have machine guns. He, yeah. But he, he has a bulletproof vest on and they right. take him to go eat. Get something right. to eat before going to the prison. Right. And you have unarmed black people being killed over selling a cigarette. Right. And, um, a possible $20 counterfeit bill right. or pulled over for a tail light. You know? right. So these people aren't even armed. But yeah. the ones who were doing the killing, you you taking them to the precinct. There are a lot. I'm not saying anybody should be shot. Nobody should be shot unless the they are their lives are in danger and we're putting other people's their lives, lives in danger. Too. But you know, it's just look, cops have it hard. But they do. if you don't do something about it, it just escalates everything. You know, yeah. and people become um, immune to. Two things. So this yeah. really changed. This last one with George Floyd. Yeah. I, but, I'm but they still circle the wagons because up in Buffalo, that 75 year old white man that was yeah. pushed down, busted his head open, yeah. and they fired the police officer. Did it. 57, 57. other uh, police right. in, whole team in, in of that, that unit. unit. They quit. Yeah. They quit that unit because you know. And then they went like a few hundred of them went to the courthouse to um, cheer the cops who were charged as he came on to cheer him in support. You know, all those cops went out there. So it's out of control. Yeah, it, they it, did it, it. It, Yeah, it's, it's been out of control. And, and you know, thing. yeah, you know, the thing is, the thing is too, like when you, um, you talked about these cops being on edge now and they don't, and they're upset about what's going on. Okay, you can be upset with the protesters, but what they need to do is be upset with the ones in their own police department exactly. that are doing these things. Exactly. Don't be upset with us. Be upset Look, with them somebody else. and police them. Police yes, your own police. If somebody else knocked that man down, they would have been arrested. Exactly. But if the cops seen somebody knock that man down, they would have right. been arrested with assault. You're going so to jail. The people that you call thugs and criminals out there, how come when you do the same thing, the cop does the same thing, they're not arrested and called criminals too. But they'll call somebody, oh, that fuck, look what he did, he knocked that man down. But they yeah. were, if I right now said, so-and-so hit me, the cops didn't, nobody had to see it. They go arrest that person. That's right. And we see it on camera that they knocked him down, right, on purpose. And not only that, they walked past him. Walk I don't care that they called for help. You, if you knock somebody down, the polite thing to do is say, I'm sorry, and pick them up. Help them up. Are they okay? But how do you walk past them like that? What kind? What kind of? Just had an instinct. You would you would do that, especially seeing right. how if old he was. Even, you just even oh, they oh, pushed man, him to know. get out the way when they right. seen and, he and, fell. And one of the office started. And he yeah, stood, and he pushed him away. Yeah, yeah. He, him he prevented and, him. No, 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 don't stop. And that's yeah. the problem. Because that's the mentality is. right there. That that what right. that that's all he in a nutshell. What's going on? And now he's told don't help. Now he keeps you know that's going to be his. Oh, we're not supposed to help. That's right. We you can get away with anything. Have. We got yeah, you, no, the right. union. Don't worry about it. We we got this. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. You know, no, it's, it's, it's just a whole other issue. We can talk about this yeah. forever. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I want to do now? Uh, you know, it's always interesting to get to that because that's current events. That's what's important. Yeah. You know, that's what's important. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that the National R&B Soci Music Society, how does someone get in touch with you? Oh, what would well. be... Well, let me ask you this question first. Let me ask you this question first. Where do you see the society going? What's the plans for the future? What do you see within the next year, two years? What are you trying to accomplish? Well, in the next year, to what we what we would like to accomplish is to have a building to okay. um, some kind of museum okay. to preserve artifacts from that era that we are preserving, you know. So that's our that's our goal. But that court, that takes so much money. It takes yes. but if I can interject. That, uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday, we just reached our 750,000 
like on our page. Fan page members. Fan page members. Nice. Seven hundred fifty thousand. Seven hundred fifty thousand. You're killing it. And each one of those people just gave a dollar. I was saying three dollars to Marshall Thompson of the shy lights. He said a dollar. You know, that's seven hundred fifty thousand. Student said a dime. That's seventy five thousand. That's seventy five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you know what? How do you make that happen? I mean, put together a campaign. How do you make that happen? I know it says. I mean, we have the. You know, we have people from all around the world. It's amazing. Last week alone, we reached one point six million people that came on our Facebook page. Our yeah. fa- you know, people have websites, and but our Facebook page is what's happening. You know, because yeah. the people are engaged on there. So. Um, but we have to somehow turn that into making money for the organization. You yeah. know, when I say for the organization to, to do the things that we want to do, to start a fund for artists that are in need. Um, people think we, first of all, we don't have a building, so we are online, you yeah. know, everything's yeah. online. Uh, like I said, we have the um, get black tie galas, we have the all white parties, we have the summer concerts, we have the barbecue but we need to do um, other things. You know, we do help to put money in the artist's pockets because we book them out, we hire them, you know, and promote them. But like I said, we'd like to do some kind of building to uh, house some artifacts from that era. Uh, The the walk. We made attempts to uh, uh, acquire uh, a a building building, uh, over the past number of years uh, to to start a museum, have a radio station, recording mm-hmm. station, mm-hmm. video mm-hmm. studio. Um, what else did they say? Oh, actually a showroom, you know. Um, the, uh, when we celebrated our 10th, 10th anniversary, anniversary in 2018, we used, we used the showroom at Clar- Clarish, a yes. hotel in Atlantic City. Uh, yeah. We had been in negotiations with trying Clarish a couple it. of years before that, trying to acquire the casino sure. floor the, which they ended up turning into an art museum yeah. and also mm-hmm. the showroom because the showroom was like perfect me. not only for um, doing our galas and other events but would have been a perfect venue for us to continue to give the artist members an opportunity to perform uh, it did, that didn't work out but that's one of the type of things that we would like to do have a permanent location mm-hmm. where we can have our performances and our galas and award ceremonies and all yeah. 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 Tell me a little bit about uh, you got a, a few events that you do. Let's break it down. You do your gala. Can you explain in detail about the gala, how that works, and you know, tell the people? Y'all, y'all, y'all are good. Y'all are good. I don't like talking. You don't You're like doing talking. well, though. Go ahead. Well, I like, I can talk to one on a thousand, but just like structured. Right. <laughs> the gala is the event that we hold um, uh, practically every year where we honor uh, members for their achievements okay. uh, in the uh, record industry, in radio, and promotion, right? Um, and normally artist members will contribute in terms of their performances and their presentations mm-hmm. uh, during our gala. Our gala is usually held in the fall, uh, in September or, or October. Okay. Uh, we've been holding the galas for uh, about the past four or five years in, in Philadelphia um, at the Doubletree by Hilton, okay. Philadelphia International Airport. With the exception of the 10th anniversary at Clarence. Right, right, with the exception of the 10th anniversary where we held it in, in Atlantic City. Uh, so that's it. So it's, it's, it's a black tie, mm-hmm. dinner, and awards ceremony. Um, and uh, we bring in our artist members and also our public members. Um, and it's a it's only a limited a limited night. amount to the public because it's you know we only could have so many. But our yeah. public yeah. members get the first dibs at getting the ticket. But it's yeah. a beautiful, beautiful classy affair, mm-hmm. and it's it's one of the opportunities during the year where we get a chance to see. Uh, African American nice, uh, and listening and to uh, to great music and it gets better. He's passed on a reach. Wow. I mean, just a name. If you don't have to name all, just a few. Just let the people well, know. Well, we try to honor our our members, and if mm-hmm. it's somebody, uh, you know, 
all basically all the classic soul artists from you know of course black ivy stylistics mm -hmm. um um uh Mandrill, Mandrill, Blue Magic, Soul Generation. Um, yeah, Keith Sweat, Jay too. Rod, Didn't you have Keith Sweat? Keith one Sweat. Time? Nice. Um, Betty Wright. We just on it. Betty, Betty Wright. Wright. Wow. Right. We got Betty Wright, wow. Saida Garrett, mm -hmm. um, Kenny Gamble, Gamble and Huff. Little, uh, Anthony, Little Anthony. Anthony. Little Anthony, my man. Yeah, that's, Hurt yeah, that so was, bad. That was, that's right. And Black Ivory honored them. They did it, their song. They honored them. I saw that. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that was excellent. Um, that was excellent. Yeah. Um, Hell of a job. No doubt. Uh, cool in the game. Cool in the game. Uh, playing Perth. Yeah. Okay. Um, Perth. Who our plan was to honor uh, Kenny Kenny this, year. this year. So we haven't okay. postponed it because we're trying to see that's a September 27th. We're trying to see if that can, you yes. know, haven't postponed it yet. Oh, you haven't? Okay. No, we're just okay. playing it by ear. But okay. um, yeah, Jim Kahn, um, Michael Henderson. Michael Henderson. Uh, Um, we did first choice. Yes, yeah, yeah first choice. Honeycomb, Honeycomb Melissa Morgan, Allison Williams, Sarah, Sarah Dash. Dash. Nice. So that's a, that's a Vaughan that's a Harper, heck of a list. Vaughan, Vaughan, Vaughan. 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 That's a Williams. list right there. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. What about the barbecue? Oh, do we do? Oh no, no. Who do we do? Who do we do? Oh, the Isley Brothers. The Isley. Brothers. Oh, okay. Right, yeah, Isley yeah, Brothers. Yeah, Brothers. Cool. The Mandrill. Um, we did, uh, matter of fact, we had to give the Isley Brothers their awards on stage. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And now the barbecue. You do uh, you do, do the R&B barbecue. Um, I've attended a few of them. Yeah, it's a members only thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Talk a little bit about that because, you know, members need to get be, become members in order to attend. But go well, ahead. It's just where you just let your hair down. And mm -hmm. like Stu said, they never, even though they knew each other from the 70s, mm -hmm. um, you know, from back then, they really didn't have the, uh, they really didn't fellowship. Really? No. Oh, they see each other back then. We were in competition back oh, then. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you, had to, you, had, you had to worry about people cutting the sound off on you when you were on stage back wow. then. Wow. Your equipment. Look, wow. <laughs> that's crazy. Like, but let me tell you of uh, the iconic, legendary acts uh, that, that, were around at the time, you know, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes of Delphonics, the moments Ohio players, they were right, during right. the time uh, when the music was new that mm -hmm. we now consider classic, you know. Well, the night, they hadn't seen each other in like over 40 years, right? Yeah, 40 years. Yeah, um, Stuart wow. and Barbara. Well, Black Ivory did like a two week thing opening for Gladys Knight and the Pips back in the 70s, right? Yeah. So they hadn't seen each other, but it was like, hey, it was like, it goes right back to. Yeah, it goes right back. Yeah, nice. it, it was like nice. so familiar. <laughs> you would think nice. it was, you would be like, who are you? But it was just like, like it was yesterday, right? Yeah, it was great for them to, to see each other and see each other. That's fantastic. You also have an event, Um, you have a white affair that you do. Yeah. Uh, Tell us about That's that. That's kind of new. We were getting ready to have the fourth, but of course we're gonna have to postpone that one. That was due, gonna be June 27th. Um, that's another one that's like a lot of members. It's, it's the artists get to come and the members get to come and we just relax and dance and it's an all white dance party. We've been having it in June. Mm -hmm. Um, all white dress affair. Sometimes people say, What do you mean all white? The white people, it's all, all white. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's nice. well, it's just, you know, the barbecue, even though we have music playing, you know. Uh, the barbecue is mostly uh, sitting down, uh, eating, breaking talking, bread. you know, uh, breaking bread, like she said, you know, and and uh, catching up on each other's lives, just having wow. a good time, wow. nice, you know. And the the gala is a different affair, you know. It's a sit down, black tie dinner with presentations and live music performances, but the all white party is just. Just that. A dance you know, it's, party. it's just a dance party. It's two so, step yeah. on. So trained. So you yeah. still got it. <laughs> right, right. It's Everybody nice. gets together, you know, dressed in all white, listening to great music and dancing, you know. And then nice. we have summer concerts and we had to make. Right. Cancel them this summer. Right. Um, but summer concerts is when we get a chance because at our gala, the Black Tie Gala, and the, um, um, the artists that are members, they perform, they donate their services you know, to perform. 
So, right. you know, right. we don't have to pay them anything. They're members. But when there is time for money to be given out, yes. of course, we look to the ones who donate their services to the organization. Absolutely. Um, and t- that right there was our 10th anniversary, the one up top there. And we had 15 acts that was at the Claridge, right? Hmm. And Sorry, I missed it. Well, yeah, yeah, we had 15. So the 10th anniversary, we did a black tie, um, black tie gala in concert. So that wasn't the regular, because it was the 10th anniversary of the mm-hmm. organization. So we had a concert. We normally have performances for who we honor. So this was just an outright concert. We had 15 acts, and wow. everybody donated their services. You know? Wow. And I, when then the summer concerts came up for the next year, I had to make sure that I can, you know, go back to the ones. That, yeah. Who, yeah. And I had the rest. I probably <laughs> got 10 of the acts, 10 to 12 maybe 12 of the acts on the 2019 summer concert. And I was getting the other three for this year on there because like I had people go say, Oh, well, can I, you know, put me on there? And I have to go to the people who yeah. are members who, yeah. people who donate their services. So makes sense. when there's yeah. money to give, we yeah. have to do that. It makes That's sense. That's the only right thing. It so makes it was like, sense. Oh, well, why don't you put me, you never put me on in. Well, they don't understand. It's a membership organization, first of all. Right. So, even though we do book people out, um, we push our members first. But if somebody call and say, um, we want, can you get so-and-so and so, then we can get them. But mm-hmm. if they they specifically want someone that's different, but we, of course, we push our members to, Absolutely. to work. Absolutely. Um, we are so appreciative of them who, mm-hmm. because they, this is their organization and right. they need, they feel like it's theirs, it's ours. It's, it's not just, because I'm president, it's my organization. It's the artists, and it's not just artists; it's songwriters and producers. So we honor, you know, songwriter producer award as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but and I'd like to take this time to uh, extend our thanks to people that have uh, donated their time and service every year. Basically, it's like uh, uh, Allison Williams. And she she partner. hosts it every. <laughs> Every gala, she sang at the first one, and then after that, from the second to the tenth, she was host. Except for the first oh, yeah. two. No, but Leroy performed on the first oh, he one. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, uh, yeah, that it. It's like, what do I mean? And Leroy takes he he does the music. Right. He takes his time. You know, takes your time to right. so, make the music. I'd like to thank thank them, you know, for extending themselves that way. And you know, Maurice is our host, and Boley. Right. Oh, Yes, and Boleg Lou, he, he brings does. people in, you know. Right. And um, beyond it, he he always creates a, a, a beautiful video uh, for the opening of the gala. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah. He goes out on the street and talks to people. It's always, <laughs> you know, it lightens up the uh, mood when at the opening of the uh, event. And and he's also been very instrumental in bringing a uh, number of people into the organization. You know, Allure. Mm-hmm. Um, he brought Betty Wright in for the for the um, award ceremony that, that we did. Yeah, remember that year. Um, and but, hmm? Saida, who's and Saida, Saida Garrett. You know, he helps bring certain people in okay. to the organization and who we're honoring. Okay. Right, and no. also um, William Day. Absolutely. And it's a free event. Mm-hmm. It's at the marina, so it's just a beautiful day. You know, it's a beautiful day. That you're off the water. And people come with their coolers, their chairs, and um, it's just a fun time. E- even though the uh, the artists are working, it's a chill day. We have the food. You know, it's at the marina. It's at the Gardner's Basin. It's a, where the aquarium is in Atlantic mm-hmm. City, but it's on the marina. It's not where the the strip is and the boardwalk is right. by the marina. Right. So it's just a, it's just a nice event, and I love having it because we're able to at that point put money in the artist's pocket. There you it's go. A good thing. There you go. It's that's, a good that's beautiful. Thing. And I, I don't want us to, you know, leave this interview without acknowledging other people that are instrumental to the organization. Uh, my Ray Francois, yeah. Maria Miller, William oh, Blackshear, yeah. Floyd Williams, okay, Gray, uh, Ophelia Floyd Gray, Williams. you know, uh, uh, Deanna Jordan, Dee Dee. Yeah. You know, all these people are volunteering their time. Camille and, and Martha Hunter. And, right, you know, like, right. It's Daniel Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Touch of class. Like they're great people. 
Nice. But these are people that, like, day of, you know, you mm -hmm. need all this help. You know, I could do so much. Right. Things during the year. But right. the day of, well, I'm sure you put on events, so you know. Mm -hmm. um, but you just need these hands, and you don't think you need them, and they're there in Shirley Hall. I mean, we just have right, right. so many different people that help that day off to make it come off. You know, they come mm -hmm. early or come the yeah. night before and help, just help to set set things up and you think you don't need the help and you don't know you need it to oh no oh, yeah you can't do it by yourself and we're going to forget some people that we need to thank but we just want to let them know if you helped out we are so uh uh thankful you know yes. uh, for your help and, that sounds uh, good blessings too yeah so you thank know what you. thank you to jimmy and your staff and ray oh yeah Good yeah, staff, your team at fresh entertainment thank you thank you you know and i want to i want to say to both of you you know um since i've met you um, for the most part, we've always had a uh, respectful, friendly, and courteous relationships. Um, Stuart, I don't know if you remember, I met you, I remember, I remember Fred Nunnery, you were doing something on... Oh, no, Fred. I'm sorry, we didn't yeah. mention Fred. Fred. Yeah, Fred, that's my man. Yeah, Fred, yeah, no, you know, that's good brother. Man. Good brother. Beyond, yeah, oh, yeah, he's yeah, he's a good guy. Yes, yes. And uh, you were doing a show, you were doing a show in... Uh, I think it's Jackson Heights, and it was at the drug program. I don't know if you remember that. I think it's called Encore. It was at the drug program many years ago, and Fred was with you. And my brother and I came in, and then we met We met you guys in the back. So from that point on, you know, it's always been mutual respect and love, brother, and I appreciate you, man. And, you. and Vanessa, thank you so much, you You're know, welcome. for what you do. You know, um, once again, you know, I tell anybody that they need to know who you are because you play an important role. You may not be out in front of the mic, but <laughs> like me, we're behind the scenes and we make things happen. Yeah, and just want those to people the... in front of the mic, they have to understand, well, they understand, it can't <laughs> go without us too. So it's, it's, it's a partnership. Yeah. People behind the scenes. Yeah, everybody has it's... roles. You just yeah, have to you know your role. role. And no role is really bigger than the other. You right. know, you play, you put, no matter how big you part play, you play, to the small part, it all helps to turn the wheel. Um, and like you said, we got, you know, we just reached our 750,000. That's beautiful. Page, fan page, like, and it's it's just unbelievable how much support we have on that fan page. And I would like people to know, it's the National R&B Music Society. There you go. On Facebook fan page. And that's and all it is, it can just, that's it. Not fan page, but just the National, that's the way you just type it in? National R&B Music Society. Period. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the website is rnbmusicsociety.com. Okay. Now, Raymond Nancy Boyd. Raymond Nancy Boyd, musicsociety.com. Okay. Now, <laughs> someone would it become a member, what do they do? Oh, they, that's where they would go and hit become a member to the, our website. To the website. Yeah. Okay. And even if you're on the fan page, there's a sign up from the fan page on Facebook. But the website, www.rnb, like Raymond Nancy Boyd, musicsociety.com. Okay. And membership is fifty dollar donation annually. You know, since we are five hundred C, we are five hundred one C three tax exempt nonprofit organization. So, um, whether you buy a ticket to the gala or to the all white, all that is tax deductible because it's we're um, it's a donation. Gotcha. Okay. Now the last question: Where do you see us going with entertainment after all this is done? Where do you see this going? Do you see it? coming back? Do you see it being different? What do you see moving forward as far as entertainment and gatherings and actual concerts? Well, if we, if we um, have to, if we're still in this COVID-19 era, I, I see a lot of driving or mm. social distancing. Outside events, I think, are a little easier, you know, mm -hmm. to manage, but I know somebody was trying to get the boardwalk hall and they said for every two seats you have, you have to leave four empty and real That's promote, right. you know, promoters aren't going to do that. Um, but I don't know. I think that people want to go out. So yeah, yeah, I see yeah, people yeah. buying tickets. <laughs> I see people buying tickets. I don't know what you think. So. I, th I think within, in, in, a, in a year's time, uh, the, this danger yeah. inoculated from it. So I don't think there'll be as much of a danger uh, of a spread or further outbreak. But I'm talking about a, a, year, a year from now. Yeah. A year from yeah. now. Yeah. Um, 
hopefully they, we won't have anything else to worry about at that time. Absolutely. But um, I, I think particularly, um, uh, like we said, a year from now, we'll be going more towards outdoor events where there's less less danger of a spread anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that a lot of artists have now seen the opportunity and the writing on the wall that we're going to see a lot more uh, streaming performances. Yes. Um, yes. And, yes. you know, people are going to find a way to innovate. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it's, especially if we're locked down for uh, longer periods of time. Um, am I muted? Can you, you can hear we me? Can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you well. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I can definitely hear you. Right I hear there. you. Even... There's a red line through the mic. Oh, yeah. Well, but but I, I, I think that uh, people are going to come up with innovative and creative ways to uh, get their music out and to entertain people. Mm -hmm. um, Melissa Morgan has a show July 3rd. It's a drive-in concert. So people really? are bringing cars in. Yeah, so. Where at? Where was that? I think in New York somewhere. Really? Mm -hmm. okay. it's a right. That's what concert. we wanted to do. We were going yeah. to do summer it for the summer concerts. and But the um, people who fund the state that does the funding mm -hmm. um, that we get the contract with aren't, since it's so much happening with yeah. the they're not funding entertainment. They they give so much money for the summer concerts in Atlantic City yeah. um, to Live Nation, everything to bring concerts on the beach. It's like a whole package, but they're not doing any funding this summer because they need, need there's money needed. That makes yeah. sense. Was, and yeah. even though we were already already approved, approved for Where it and go? everything, yeah, it's like mm. wow. Yeah. But yeah, you I know can't... what? Can't you know? It's completely understandable. Safety first, always safety yeah. first. So and I do want to say, I know people are. Like, oh man, you know, this we in the house, but for those that aren't suffering, um, like in the home in on uh, shelters and stuff like that, but what better way to ride out something like this than in the comfort of your home? That's right. You know, we have cable, right? right? We have internet, we have right. food, we have gas, so we have, you know. I, I I feel blessed to be able to be in my, the comfort of our home doing this. So right. that doesn't bother me that we're not at well. We don't like. We like being home anyway. As much as we go out, <laughs> you haven't seen your grandkids. I know. It's, it's I know. March. Three months. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But we like March. still would be like we. I gotta put my pants on. We gotta go where? <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. We're home, even though we out a lot. And you know we out a lot, but we like right. being home. We love being home. It's a beautiful thing. Listen, I want to. I want to thank both of you all for coming on. You know, uh, I'm quite sure once we air this, the people are going to enjoy, and they got a lot of information. You know, especially about what you're doing, who you are as people as well. Uh, Black Ivory, we're gonna have to do that separately, brother, because I have some questions for you. But that's a whole nother story. Oh, yeah. Look, that's a whole nother story. Quick. They did an interview, and mm -hmm. it was like a, a two hours or whatever two, hour, three hours. when y'all first got together. It was like, right. well, this time, everybody's like, well, well, how many parts? Oh, you got talking to? about the cable show? The National R&B Music Society. I see big things in the future, and I am asking everyone to reach out, reach out, become a member, make a donation. This is an independent 501c3 organization that needs our help. Mm -hmm. And this is from our very own. People think we have money, you know, because yeah, everything yeah. looks good. You know, no, we, looks need good. we need money. We need money, y'all. We need money. Go to our the site and donate. Us, right? Go donate because they provide a service that is needed. They are preserving our history. So with that being said, I want to say thank you again to both of you. You thank have been you. with me on the Let's Boogie one-on-one -on -one beneath <laughs> the surface. Peace, y'all. Love y'all. See you later. Okay.